Okay, shooters and reloaders, and three circles, passengers and members, it's Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And today we're going to kind of discuss the Russian slugs and all the things we picked up between the last video and now, bring you up to date on the best way to handle these slugs. But before we do that, I'd like to thank the new patrons. Over the last two months, we've gotten Dave Johnson, Steve Martin, Barry Geipel, James Mars, Ronald Flanagan, Chris Balcom, Neil Marcelino, and Jonathan Leslie. So appreciate all those new patrons. Really great to have the support of all the patrons. You're all much appreciated. But let's get to the shotgun slugs using the Russian slugs and two kinds of Russian slugs and the apparatus we need to really do a good job reloading them. First of all you need a reloading tray and you can't get 12 gauge reloading trays easily. There are some available at BPI but you can go ahead and make your own like this one that I made and I've done videos on these. So this one happens to be a 55 hole tray is good for 10 gauge all the way down to 28 gauge works just fine. Not good for 410. The next thing is hulls. And you can use once fired hulls picked up at ranges where they shoot factory slugs. The empty hulls, no one ever wants those. You can pick them up and use them again for no cost. Or you can do what a lot of us do, which is to buy brand new 12 gauge hulls with high brass from BPI, and these are from Fioki, and they're already primed. So you can get primed hulls, not have to pay hazmat. Real good way to buy shot shell primers, already primed hulls. Anyway, so I got some of these from BPI before the shortage. Now with the shortages, you're going to have a hard time getting these until the supplies return. But I trust it won't be too long before that happens. So these are Fioki primers. If you don't buy primed hulls, then you got to buy some shot shell primers. And any of the shot shell primers from our domestic manufacturers are fine. Or you can use Fiocchi's or Cheddites, anything like that, because the primers will all work well with our slug load. Now, interestingly, I've been discussing powder with one of our new patrons, Steve Martin. And he wants to use Red Dot. Well, you can use Red Dot, uh, just like a trap load, 19 grains to 20 grains of Red Dot. But start low, work up. And that'll give you, like, trap velocity anywhere around 1250 feet per second but if you want regular slug performance you gotta go to a shot shell slug powder and the two best ones are Hodgden long shot and Alliant blue dot can't go wrong with those two now you might find other powders that you can substitute but for slug loads long shot or blue dot can't go wrong now Turns out that our friend Dave Thorzax, by the way, hi to James over at the Reloaders Network. Whoop, he just took a pratfall. Thanks to James, because he does the Reloaders Network, and that'll come in later because what happens is a lot of the apparatus we use to load the Russian slugs, as well as the Russian slug molds themselves, are available from the Reloaders Network and James over there is the one that runs that for us. You know James, that's loads of bacon. That's why he's got a strip of bacon here. But anyway, back to powder. I've got long shot here. Our friend Dave Thorzax likes to use up to 40 grains of long shot powder for this slug or that slug. But once again, start low because the 40 grains, that's a big beefy load. You want to drop that down to say 33 grains is more appropriate. Turns out that I've used up to 40 grains of blue dot with this 
Russian paradox slug. This is the paradox. Now, of course, starting low, like around 33 grains, is much more appropriate and prudent. I recommend you start around 33 grains. In fact, in the slug loading and field application book here, this manual recommends 33 grains of hydrogen long shot. But you can go up from there, but uh, I would start at 33 grains and not uh, jump up too quick. Now, according to the BPI Slug Loading Field Application Manual, a good starting load for hydrogen long shot with these slugs is 33 grains of long shot. And I actually started Blue Dot also at 33 grains. But I've worked up to 40 because of factors beyond our control with differences in guns and slugs and loads and loading procedures, all that kind of thing. Start at 33 grains of either long shot or blue dot. And actually, the favorite load that Dave Thorzax uses is 40 grains of long shot in his gun. But we don't dare go there without starting at 33 grains first and carefully working up. So I did that with blue dot. I worked up to 40 grains of blue dot, but I started at 33 and worked up slowly and my gun happens to like 40 grains also. So I've gotten anywhere in that 33 to 40 grain area works well with blue dot. I haven't used long shot before. And so I got some of this powder before the powder shortage. So I'm actually okay with doing some work with long shot. I'm going to start with 33 grains of long shot. Now when it comes to wads, you have to use a proprietary wad that's available from the Reloaders Network for the Paradox Slugs. And the Paradox Slugs look like this. They've got a hollow and a post. And what happens is the slug has a receptacle for the wad that's made just to fit together with that. And we'll discuss that in a little while. But if you don't like that, you can go ahead and use the Russian Svareg slug and cast them yourself with molds from the Reloaders Network and then you can use wads like this one happens to be a piston skeet wad from BPI. You cut off the cup section and then you screw attach the slug to the wad base and you get the slug that you can load. We'll show you how to do that. Well, once again, these days, everything's in short supply. Wads, hulls, primers, powder. But make yourself a shopping list and get yourself some funds set aside because when these supplies start coming back, you might want to go ahead and stock up on some of these items. You don't want to overpay scalpers' prices for reloading components. Do not fall into that kind of trap. Wait until the supplies return and the prices come back to reasonable and then stock up. So let's discuss the Russian Paradox slug first. Now this is the regular Paradox, not the Super Paradox. But depending on your alloy, this will weigh a little over 1 and 1 eighth ounces. Between 1 and 1 eighth and 1 and 1 quarter ounces. And you can powder coat these. But if you powder coat these, be careful that you don't get a lot of powder inside this receptacle. For example, can you see that wad of powder coat down there? Looks like chewing gum down there. If you get that, you got problems because your wad will not go in. And you can't get that wad of powder coat out of there because it's very tough. Now also, do you see that tag at 3 o'clock right there? That's no good either. You've got to get a little blade and actually shave that out. A pocket knife works real well. Just shave that piece off. You can do that. And if you get any fins on the outside, you need to shave those off too. Because they'll get in the way of your reloading. Now also, do you see that powder coat that's on the inside of the slug receptacle? On the inside of the flange right there. 
The problem with having powder coat there is that when the wad goes in and you seat it, the wad has flanges on it that makes a seal there. And what happens is the air can't get out. So you see these little fins right here? They look like uh, cooling for a Thompson submachine gun. But anyway, when those go in and you put this wad together with the slug, that makes a seal if you have powder coat in there. And then what happens is, when you go ahead and put your slug and wad together like this, later on, the slug will start rising up because of the air pressure. If you're not powder coating your slug, there's no problem with this. But if you powder coat your slug right there, where the tip of my little pointer is, if there's powder coat there, you're gonna get the air pressure problem. So if you see that you've got powder coat there, you gotta get rid of that. And the way you do it is you take a knife like this and you just simply put it in there and place the blade so that it's flat against the lid and actually shave the powder coat off until you actually see that you've got bare lead showing you actually see bare lead showing you see that right there where I pointed there's bare lead there and all you need is a little patch of bare lead like that and you're gonna be fine the other way to fix this problem is that you when you go ahead and put the powder on the slug you go in with a q-tip and you just kind of run it in there and clear the powder off of this critical area right there just clear it off of that when you go ahead and do your powdering and then once that's done you go and go ahead and put that like this on your tray and put it in your 400 degree oven to cure the powder coat when you're done you won't have any powder coat in this area now when you put the slug and wad together you can't just push this down on a tabletop and get that together. When you push hard enough, you'll feel one click and then two clicks as that goes on. And you don't want to seat the slug all the way down to the main basement flange here, as you see. It should sit a little bit higher. Now, when you look at the BPI manual, this is what I mean. Do you see how the slug here is not seated all the way down to this main basement flange. But there's a little gap there. And that's the design of this system. Because when the powder first ignites, it goes ahead and seats that for you. You actually need to have that as part of the cushioning against the powder burn. So you see our slug and wads have that same gap right there. And that's what you want, you want that gap. Well, Dave Thorzax and I broke all the ground for all of you loaders of slugs out there. And that is, we first use a kind of a can and push down with the palm of our hand on a table to get that click, click, and then it's right where we want it. The problem with that was we determined that when you just push on that slug and there's no support out here, what happens is you get collapse you get bending of the pillars of the wad in the compression zone. And that was shown in our shooting. That gave us some accuracy problems when that happened. So what Dave Thorzax came up with was to use a slug wad and put it into a fired hull like this. And then by going ahead and pushing here, we would join the wad and slug. The problem is that didn't help the compression zone collapse. You see, this wad is designed so that when the powder goes off, you get acceleration of this unit, which causes this to seal and that to seal, so that this is in alignment, so the compression zone will collapse in a certain controlled manner. If you damage this compression zone, just putting the wad and slug together, what you'll get is a leaning. Where this pillar leans, that pillar leans, and this center section actually 
leans over to one side, so you got an out of alignment wad. And that causes a problem in accuracy just to begin with when you're setting off the charge. Now a lot of you have heard what the solution is to this, and we've got a good solution, but because this video is getting too long, I'm going to divide it up into two parts. This is the end of part one. This is Fortune Cookie 45LC. Bye for now. Next video is going to have a lot more on it.